Hey child and welcome back to my channel. So it has been a minute since I've done a sit down and chat video on this channel where we just was talking about life and all the things. And so I decided I wanted to do that here. So a couple weeks ago, I gave people on Instagram the opportunity to ask me whatever they wanted. And I'll be honest, <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're gonna do a, a girl talk, get ready with me because everything y'all was asking was like girl talk topics. Like, have I been dating? How have I been dating? And about weight loss and body stuff. So in this video, that's what we'll be doing. So before I do that, let me handle some business because y'all know YouTube got a YouTube. Number one, um, thank you all for everyone who has been supporting my brand, Champion Beauty. I've been using this on my hair regrowth journey. All of the information is already on my channel, but this has been really, really helping me. God really gave me this formula. It's been a blessing to me. I hope it has been to those of y'all who have purchased it. Link in the description box if you are interested. There's a discount code available. I know I will not always be running discount codes, but I'm also aware this is a new company I'm trying to get off the ground. And so I want to get some testimonials, let people see that it really works. And then we'll go back to full price. Next, uh, two companies I want to give a shout out that have been a supporter of my channel. This isn't sponsored by them. HelloFresh and Scentbird. HelloFresh is an amazing food delivery service. They're bringing food right to your front door. Uh, they have a special going on as well as free appetizers. I'll link that down in the description box. It does really save me time. As a mother, I don't have to worry about number one, meal planning, number two, going shopping. And so they supported my channel and I really wanted to give them a shout out. As well as Scentbird, again, this isn't sponsored. Um, you can basically, y'all know sometimes fragrances can be expensive. So you can try it before you buy it for like $8 or something like that. They Sent me some really bomb stuff and i really really appreciated it so i just want to give those two companies a shout out as well as myself so with that being said let's get into my business so i think i'm gonna call this video allow me to reintroduce myself because i'll be honest i have gone through some major life transitions since i first started this channel and i feel no i am a totally different woman when i first started youtube i was a naive girl who didn't realize just just how bleak life could be at times but life has has quickly grown me up and right now i'm in a place where i can say life isn't perfect but i have more peace and more joy than i've ever experienced in my entire life and i'm very very grateful for that yeah i'm not gonna name the makeup that i'm using um because realistically do y'all really even care but anyway um i have been having a really peaceful time in my life and i thank god for that um for those that don't know i've been doing content creation i hope my mic is picking me up um, my internal mic broke, so I have one sitting right here. So it's like, if I turn this way, it might mess up. So y'all forgive me. But anyway, um, when I started content creation, I was so excited to be a hair influencer. Um, I love my mommy call it. Shout out to lady, uh, but we, we gonna call you back. I was so excited to be a hair content creator because I had went through a really bad journey. I had alopecia areata. Uh, the the diagnosis was bleak. They was telling me, oh, this ain't gonna grow back. You gotta get this shot and all that. And I really, really prayed and went to God uh, on my behalf. And that's another thing, y'all. Me and God locked in. He gonna come up in conversation. So anyway, I was really excited to be a natural hair content creator because I had overcome something. And if I could help somebody, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and hair has really changed my life. I wanted to be a cosmetologist. I was supposed to go to Paul Mitchell, but I got pregnant and I didn't want to be on my feet in cosmetology school while I was pregnant. So that got put on pause. And right now, I, I don't know if I'll ever actually be able to finish it. Um, but I have been in love with hair for a long time. And that is what I started doing as a content creator. But of course, life changes and my interests change. I became a mama. I started really loving fitness, which prevented me from keeping my hair done. Um, and then I started loving fashion. And that is something I want to incorporate more on YouTube. For those that don't know, at a certain point I started doing fashion content creation as well. Uh, just kind of reviewing some shops and things like that. I wanted to start showing y'all the actual outfits and how I wore it. But I'll be honest, I got scared. Because at the end of the day, this is still a business. So I had businesses contacting me. And they would want me to model for them. But the style of modeling was not one that I was okay with. And this was before I had reconnected with God like this. So it wasn't like I was approved. But at the same time, 
there's just a certain way I don't want to show up on the internet. And if you sending me, uh, can you model this boob tape for us? That that's the type of stuff they wanted. They knew basically because any company that want to work with you, they're gonna research you thoroughly. And they knew from my gym content, I had a certain physique. And so, and let's be honest, six sales. So that is the type of modeling opportunities I was getting. Um, clothing companies, um, can you model our fitness stuff? But we need you to do squats. And just like different things like that, they wanted me to play up sexuality. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not approved, but I don't wanna do that on the internet because my mindset is always on my son. And I don't ever want him to Google me and see me in boob tape if that makes sense and so that's why i backed back but as i said i really hate that i allowed that situation to scare me and steal my joy from something i really wanted to do so y'all will see more fashion content on the internet from me um but i'll just do it my way and if a company don't align with it they just don't align with it but i'm gonna do it my way so anyway yeah i started with hair did uh, weight loss stuff did some fashion did some family vlogging but overall, I can say that I love what I've been able to accomplish and I'm very, very grateful for my journey. Let me put this down because this is probably interrupting. And I should have took some notes so I could stay on journey. So anyway, that is me as a content creator. Um, that's been my journey. Let's get into my personal life. Um, life. Life. I sometimes look at my life's journey and I'm like, you really went through that and survived. So um, for those that don't know, I'm from the city of St. Louis. Once upon a time, I was married. At this point in time, I am not. I don't get into too many details uh, just to respect his privacy and the privacy of my son. But I do tell my story how I feel comfortable. Uh, life has not been easy, but at the same time, um, I'm grateful for my journey. Um, at this point in time, I have been legally single for over a year but we split about a year before that and um a lot has changed so the number one question that i always get is are you currently dating and the answer without me beating around the bush is yes i will never include that as part of my social media journey again or at least i don't think i will only because sometimes boundaries aren't really able to be enforced when you've welcomed people into your personal life like it's easy to share when things are going amazing but then when things go south and you need a little privacy so you can heal before you tell the public what's going on people don't want to give you their privacy and things become more about your personal life than and it just it becomes sticky and so i just learned my lesson i was like anything that i don't want to tell the full story about don't bring it to the internet and i respect that and so like when i say that i'm not complaining i also know what it's like to watch a content creator and i'm locked into your family at this point because that's all you ever showed me and then when y'all break up you just you go mom and don't say nothing I'm like wait a minute girl you invited me in now you want to push me away i get it so that's why i just said next time around i, I won't uh, publicized to that magnitude the most y'all will ever see is an introduction um once there is a marriage just so you can see this is him he not an axe murderer ain't no secret baby mama none of that uh and then if we have a baby i'll, I'll let y'all see like hey we we have a kid that's that's that on that um but as far as including a man in my storyline on social media i don't think i'll ever do that i'll let that person have their privacy um, to live their life because they didn't ask to be on here and that'll also give me some privacy and peace of mind by <laughs> not giving a reason for somebody to be invasive in my personal life um let's see what else so y'all know i've had weight loss surgery and i lost 130 pounds we're actually going into the fifth year of that journey i'm very very grateful um of course Surgery gives you a head start, but if you don't change your mindset, you don't change your relationship with food, if you don't change your physical activity relationship, you don't get some form of discipline, all that weight is going to come back. Uh, you get about a, a good six months to a year to see that drop off. After that, you got to take that baton and get running. And that baton, I've been taking it, and I'm so, so grateful. It started with me um, having a trainer. I worked with a trainer for a year, and he's really, really good at his job in the sense that he shifted my mindset and taught me how to eat correctly for the goals that I want versus the fad diet and I had been doing at one point in time. And based off his education with me working with him for a year, 
since that year has been over. I've been still able to implement it. I do still have some weight loss goals that I want, but right now I don't feel like I'm in a race. Like I think it's because I actually like my body. Let's just be honest. Um, uh, but I do want to be the healthiest version of myself, but my goal is to get in the 150s and stay there. I do plan on having more children, at least one. So I, since my goal is the 150s, I want to get down to the maybe 140s, 130s, and then they give me leeway with childbirth to experience that. And I'll be within that leeway. So if I do have pregnancy weight on me, I'm like, well, this is what I want to look like anyway. So that is life as far as that goes. I do still eat a high protein, moderate carbs, low fat diet that works for me. I eat between 1800 to 2000 calories a day. I do a lot of strength training. I really just take care of myself. I will be honest and say I've been lax a little bit lately just because I've been super disciplined for two years. So since May, I've just been kind of like cruising. I haven't been aiming for a goal. I'll say I'm starting to aim for a goal and then I'll be like, you know, I actually don't want to. So that is what's going on as far as my body goes. I'm really, really loving the skin that I'm in. I'm loving this season of my life. Um, and I try not to be too spiritual on this channel. I save that for my Just Fay and Faith content. Oh, for those who don't know, I do have a separate channel. It's called Just Fay and Faith. That's where I share more of my personal journey with God. I actually started a Patreon as well. It will be more God-centered, but the more intimate conversations that I don't want on YouTube because I don't want it to be a part of my storyline as a content creator, AKA him, I'll be more inclined to talk about it on my Patreon community because I feel like that's a safer space. So um, if you want to join me there, you can. But again, it'll be more God-centered with just a sprinkle of my personal life versus, you know, a daily vlog type situation. How did I even get here? Oh, the season has changed for me. So basically, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, they that sow in tears will reap in joy. The last few years of my life have been extremely tear-filled very much so tear filled and I feel like I'm finally in the season where I'm reaping the joy and it feels good y'all life feels really good for me right now and it's not just because of having romantic companionship life feels good because I have peace like my relationship with God is in the most solid place it's ever been in my entire life like life could go crazy right now and I'm still solid because I'm just like all right Lord what's next okay this happened what's next I feel like I have an amazing support system I feel like God guides me I feel like things are going well for me but it's because I survived the other stuff and I think the reason I I feel so good right now is because number one I know myself in a deeper way um, because it's like you don't know how strong you are until you have no choice but to be strong. And so I found my strength because I saw it in action and I just I feel incredible in this phase of my life right now. So let me pop this lash on. Okay, so that's pretty much all I could think to tell y'all. Uh, life is good because God is good. My baby is amazing. We're working on potty training right now. Y'all pray for me because that child, he is stubborn like his, but he wouldn't be mad that I say that DJ tell you, he he real, very masculine man in, in the sense of if, if he don't want to, he ain't. And his son has picked up on that. And so I do want to say shout out to DJ too, because even though things didn't work out for us romantically, I am so grateful that I have an amazing co-parent. We didn't work out, but when it comes to that kid, we both ten toes down. I've seen so many people that when the relationship ends, the the co-parenting goes sour. And I know people will say, well, you shouldn't applaud a fish for swimming. He being a dad, that's what he's supposed to be, which is true. But I also have no problem expressing gratitude because I've seen firsthand from some people close to me what it's like to be a single parent for real and uh, I, I I really pray for people that are in those situations because I, I couldn't imagine having to do this alone so uh, 
shout out to the big homie i appreciate him for being a great co-parent to our child um all right so let's get into the questions that you all have submitted to me hey Faye, how long did it take you to lose your excess weight after vsg so i have been on a four-year journey i'm still not at my goal weight but some of that is me because i do be taking breaks and that's just being honest it took me I started like around 300 and that's just being honest um in 2020 and within one year i went from that weight to 205 prior to my son the lowest i ever got was 205 i never got out of the 200s and when i got pregnant of course i gained half my weight back and for six months i didn't lose a single pound because i was so busy trying to keep my breast milk supply up nobody told me how stressful breastfeeding was okay i thought you just popped the boob in the mouth and the baby was fed no it that's work and so um for six months i didn't lose weight it took me a year with a trainer to get that baby weight off and I finally got into the 190s and then I have been as low as the 160s. Right now I'm like 182 or something like that. But oh Lord. But that is because again, I have been on a break. I keep saying I'm gonna get back to work, I'm gonna get back to work, but then I'll just be eating and stuff. But at the same time, I don't wanna get comfortable uh, and forget my goals. So I am getting ready to go back into disciplined eating, like I said. But it has been a four year journey. It took me one year to get from the 290s to 205. It took me one year with a trainer um, and that's with me increasing muscles. So of course it's gonna take longer versus just trying to lose fat. It took me one year with him to go from the 240s to 190. And from there, I have just been maintaining it. So I hope that makes sense. Someone asked this and, and I answered it on Instagram already, but I'll ask it here. Will I raise champ with healthier habits? Yes, I do want my son to have healthier habits. Like I do allow him snacks. I don't allow him candy. Um, occasionally he'll have something sweet, but because a lot of my bad habits in my relationship with food started from childhood, I try to raise him that way now. So he eats a lot of fruits and vegetables my baby eat brussels sprouts what two year old you know is just like i like my brussels sprouts but that's because i know how to season them amen but yes i want my baby to have a healthy balanced relationship with food i don't want him to be scared of food i don't want him to be scared of snacks but i want him to be raised with discipline so that's the journey that we are on right now um are you dating we talked about that yes he will not be a storyline on social media ever um i just I, for me I'm just like, especially having been married before, I understand just how sacred marriage is. And I want to protect it with all I got. So unless we're in business together as content creators and there's something that we agree to, which I would never agree to, then he's not going to be on my social media. So uh, whoever I end up with, just just know she happy. Amen. Um, how am I doing? I'm amazing. Life is a blessing to me right now uh, life isn't perfect i have struggles just like everybody else they stress me out just like everybody else i'm not exempt but i can say life is genuinely in a really good space i feel like and i say this now i don't know cocky stuff but i feel like i look better than i have in my adult life i feel better than i have like between my relationship with god and having gone to therapy i feel internally better i feel like my soul is at peace. I can't complain at all. Even the things that aggravate me, I can't complain at all. Life is actually really, really good. Knowing what I know now, what would I do differently as a content creator? I would have jumped on TikTok in 2020. For me at the time, I was like, TikTok that app where the kids go to dance. I'm not gonna do no two step. But now the way social media has quickly changed. First of all, TikTok has changed. It used to be more fun. Now it's a bunch of thick think pieces and opinions and stuff. I'm like, why are y'all so mad? Uh, but I would have got on TikTok sooner. And number two, and this is just me being totally honest, I don't regret it, but I would just say as a new content creator, keep this in mind. Um, because my niche is something that is very pigeonholed in the sense that my niche caters primarily to black women. Some larger companies do not respect that. They don't wanna pay me my worth. Um, and then the smaller black companies that I do work with, they don't have the budgets of the bigger companies. So I would just say, 
whatever you do be okay with it and do it for the love not just the money because if you pick the the niche that don't really have a lot of money you 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 gonna see people that's getting 30 to 50 thousand dollars a deal while these smaller and i say this with respect these smaller companies they offer you 500 dollars. i'm like wait a minute no, no a niche that is um available to everyone is of course family content because people love families uh number two food because everybody has to eat number three clothes because people all have to get dressed skincare can be a little bit more niche but at the same time that is something for everybody so just think it is your niche if you are looking at this as a business is this something for everybody or a small group know what you're going to, to be in and be okay with that decision i regret nothing i don't regret having an audience base that is it is everybody but it primarily caters to black women i don't um regret that because my biggest supporters have been black women i always ride for us even if i do move into other uh forms of content which i have done i'll never forget where i come from nobody will ever have your back in this world like a black woman and y'all have been so supportive to me y'all have treated me like an extension of your families and i am so incredibly grateful i don't care about the dollar amount of course this is business i have to take care of my child but i will never regret I will never, like there have been major management companies that wanted to work with me, but because I was an audience that was considered smaller, they passed. I do not regret it. I will always ride for us because us has always rolled for me. So anyway, uh, back to the content creator journey. Know who your audience is uh, and stay consistent. As you grow, you can expand, but as if, as you want to grow, pick a niche, stick to it, and then expand later. Um, but have fun with it. Be consistent. Be yourself. Don't copy after nobody else. And just know that you can win. As you are growing, increase your quality. Increase um the, the, what your presentation is but don't let starting with small beginnings hold you back i started with an iphone iphone 11 on my biggest video i'm telling you just be consistent pick something you love know who your audience is and what path you want to take and run for your life when you do it all right next how long have you been on your journey with christ i won't go too too far into it because i do have a whole separate channel dedicated just to my relationship with god um but i have always been raised in church when i was six i knew i wanted a relationship with god so i got baptized i've been on this journey for a real long time i did pull away like a lot of people in my teens and early 20s because i was just out here um but then i came back and then i stepped away when i went through my divorce situation because i was deeply hurt but then of course i came back and this time around of being back I want to say I, I started getting closer to God in October of last year. December is when I locked in for real. And that one yes to God in December has radically changed my life and my my, my the trajectory of my relationship with Christ. So I hope that answers your question. I've been down with Jesus for a long time, honey, just the majority of my life. But this last year is when it has been crazy, crazy uh as far as my growth because i'm really really committed to growing in christ and it's like god is honoring my commitment and i'm seeing changes in my just every capacity of my life next hi baby not you champ girl forget you <laughs> but that's cool like champ went viral on tiktok and instagram i was like yo he's really the star of the family not me um but he's doing so amazing i try not to put him on the internet too much because i don't want to exploit his whole life like some people they they start documenting everything about their children's life and then as the children grow up they decide they don't want to be on the internet and then at that point you didn't build an audience that is surrounded with your children now you're taking your children away i don't want to do that i want champ to naturally decide what he want to do now funny stuff like taking him to walmart i don't mind showing that but showing his like development in school and when he go through puberty and all that no i want him to be able to grow up with some pride so that that's why I try to monitor what I show uh, as far as he goes and what I say about him but he is such an amazing kid when I say that boy brings so much joy to my life nobody I've always heard that you don't really know love until you have had a child and it kind of like help heighten being a mom helped heighten my relationship with God because it helped me to see just how unconditional love can be there's nothing Chump can do ever that would ever make me stop loving him and that really has enhanced my relationship with god i cannot explain the joy that boy gives me he is he is just 
my son is great is there a story behind the nose piercings i got this done in 2021 basically i had went to la it's a blog on my channel i went to la to see one of my cousins my favorite cousin he is in the music industry and so he had to do studio stuff like heavy on the rock star lifestyle and so i was at home and y'all know i'm very sporadic very adventurous ain't no telling what i'm gonna do i used to be way wilder than what i am now but anyway i was sitting down i had went to la we was where did i put the powder child okay so i had went to see him in la and then at the last minute he had to go do some some studio stuff so i'm just sitting in his apartment doing nothing i'm there at this time it's 2021 a lot of things are not open like they usually are they have restrictions because of covid and so i'm at home bored just just bored and i was like i want to do something fun and so i go to the alley shopping district in california and i see this shop and they giving out nose piercings in the alley and i was just like oh that looked fun but then I was like, wait a minute, this don't look sterile. So I went to the tattoo shop and got my nose piercing. Like literally j just that day, I was walking through the little, the alley and I seen people getting their nose pierced in the alley. And I decided, well, we gonna do the same thing, but we are gonna do it at the tattoo shop where it's sterile, amen. So that's, that's really the story. And for me, it was a big deal because y'all know I grew up super sanctified and things like piercings and stuff, like everything put you in danger, hell honey. And so, like I didn't even get my second hole in my ear until I was 19 and for me it was an expression of freedom to finally get this nose piercing because it's something I always wanted I used to be the hugest fan of Tupac when I was little I had no business listening to that man but I was and one thing I loved about him was his nose piercing I just thought that was so cute I always thought nose piercings was cute and so I finally decided to just go ahead and get one so that's the story <laughs> how are me and champ's dad co-parenting i'm gonna say this as respectfully as possible because honestly dj has never wanted to be on social media he just did it to help me out but if he had his way y'all would have never seen his face in the first place he just was like if this will help your career i'll do it for you um so to respect his privacy i won't go into too much but i will say for him all he knows is amazing fathers everybody in his in his family um is an amazing dad uh, and so that's something that he always honored and he was eager for the opportunity. So even though our relationship didn't work out, that did not change the fact that he wanted to be a great dad because that's all he's ever known. He honors fatherhood. And so when you have two people that value um, the upbringing of a child, those two people, even if they don't work out romantically, their first forethought it, their first thought I should say is what is in the best interest of this kid and so when you have two people that are committed to raising a a healthy child that makes co-parenting easy we don't bicker about stupid stuff our first thought is what's in his best interest and so because there is no bitterness there and there is a level of maturity there it makes co-parenting super easy he trusts me as a mother he don't try to control my decisions as a mother and i don't try to control his decisions as a dad i respect him as a dad i feel like when i think my mindset kind of helps too because i was raised old school i think that when it comes to a girl there are certain decisions that the mother needs to have the first say so on that you of course the parents talk but i feel like certain things a mother should have the decision making when it comes to a girl likewise with a boy there's certain things that like when it came to the barber for my son's haircut i'm gonna go with who his dad picked like certain things like that and i think because i respect fatherhood and he respects uh, me as a mother that helps there's a great level of mutual respect so our co-parenting journey has been incredibly easy now of course our kid is only two there will come the day where stronger decisions have to be made and we'll see what we made of then but i think that given our history of having a mutual respect for one another uh that helps to have a really easy co-parenting journey and i'm really really grateful for that are you planning to have another baby uh, I spoke on this earlier. Yes, uh, I do. At, at one point in time, I was like, because I, I'm 38 at this point, I'm like, girl, why would you do this to yourself again? Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm open to the idea. At one point in time, I was not. Now I am. And so um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Next, tips for success with meal prepping. For me, the biggest thing i'm gonna tell you change how you see food don't look at food as something you're supposed to enjoy which i mean of course you can uh enjoy it but let the primary focus of your food be nutrition 
And when you have that in mind where I'm not looking just to sit down and enjoy a meal, I'm looking to sit down and fuel my body, then you won't have a problem eating the same thing every day. That is my experience. And so for me, because I look at my food as a source to hit a goal, I don't mind eating the same thing. I might switch it up, but overall, I have a, a green veggie, I have some rice, and I have a source of protein. So a lot of time I'm eating fish, spinach, and rice. I can eat that every day and I'll be perfectly okay. Um, but I do sometimes switch up the meat, I switch up the veggies, but look at food as what can I do to hit my goal? And that makes it easy. So I just take one day where I cook enough for like three days. I enjoy cooking, so I don't mind doing it multiple times a week. Uh, I take one day where I cook all that I need to cook like it sounds boring but that's when I am consistently doing that that's when I'm consistently leaning out but gaining muscle and looking good while I'm doing it so I'm telling you keep your goal in mind that you are or fueling your body with your food not just oh I'm gonna sit down and eat something that feels good like when you look at it like boy like and I don't want you to have an unhealthy relationship with food that's why I, I'm trying to be careful in what I say um I don't want you feeling like food isn't to be enjoyable but when you have a goal in mind look at food as fuel not just oh i'm gonna sit down and eat something that makes me feel good internally like a big old bowl of alfredo with some fried chicken on top and no no we don't do that yeah just keep your eyes on your goal and you'll 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 get there and actually i'm gonna do an entire video dedicated to weight loss because i have had a lot of people join my journey on social media because they found me from uh, my weight loss story and they have been looking for inspiration motivation which i'm so grateful to even be able to provide that to somebody but they have been looking at uh my journey to help them and i'm very grateful and so i'm gonna do a whole video dedicated to what i am doing now when i'm acting like i got some sense and how i've been able to maintain because even in my 180s yeah the scale matters but it kind of don't so even in my 180s because of my habits my 180 it's still it's still it's still look it, you know it's still look and so <laughs> but we're gonna do a whole separate video about uh weight loss body image and all that other stuff so and this is the end result so thank y'all for rocking with me i appreciate every member of the city gang y'all been down with me for some years and i just I appreciate y'all doing life with me. I appreciate the support that y'all have given me through some cycles in my life that I appreciate y'all y'all rocking with me. Um, so I'm getting ready to film for my Patreon right now. Um, I do, uh, I, I plan on talking about uh, dating now that I am really committed to my faith and what that looks like and all of that. So that content will be on Patreon within the next couple of days. Uh, but I really, really appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Thank you for every company that has supported me. I'm just really in a place of gratitude for life because honestly, life is so good. I'm so, oh, okay, let me hear you. So I love y'all and I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye.